I start, perhaps um, better to understand the audience. Uh, are, are there many front-end developers? Some. Okay, that's fair enough. For the others, perhaps th this will be kind of uh, too much, perhaps. But yeah, we are always learning. So this is the um, this presentation will bring. Um, a new approach for responsive web design centered on objects rather than the, the media queries as we are used to. So responsive web design perhaps is already a, a trend uh, among the, those that uh, de develop front-end and it was a term coined by Ethan Mercote on an article that he posted on uh, a list of art on that day. Basically, he provides two ways to achieve the responsive design. The first one is inserting some media queries um, before we call the, the style sheet. And the other is using the style sheet itself and insert the media query um, and then style the object inside of it. And, yeah pretty trivial if you are already used to, to use uh, responsive web design. There is also an idea running through with the, the resp responsive web design that is um, mobile first. Um, Thomas, there's a fellow from Metronet that's there, and an uh, awesome talk about that topic on the WordCamp. I, if you didn't see, perhaps it's a good idea to understand why it's good to the approach of mobile first on responsive web design. But it's, it's not an uncommon thing for web developers, uh, front-end web developers, to receive the designs for the desktop and then the mobile uh, desktop designs to start working. And we are sometimes uh, on the difficult position to start coding, uh, having in mind the mobile first, but only having the, the, the designs for the desktop version. So this approach will try to suppress those difficulties, putting the, 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 the focus on the DOM object rather than on media queries. And for that, you will need to use preprocessors. Uh, are any one of you using any of those already? Some, okay. Uh, those preprocessors are frameworks that are built or they will rewrite your style sheets. Um, SAS, unless they are competitors between them, different approaches. To, to achieve the, the same the same goal, um, I will not dive on on those. I will talk in an abstract way because they they approach the same situation in the, in the same way. So I doesn't care to to go with, with one approach or the other. But what you can do is set your DOM object and then insert your media query. So you only have the design for the desktop version and that's what you start working on. Uh, you define the style sheet, uh, uh, the styles for that object. Um, among other, uh, other things, there are nested objects in, with these preprocessors. So you can also call dependent child on this main DOM uh, object, and then you go, you you improve the the, the script as long as you are getting the, the designs. So, for instance, I got here a new style for for um, perhaps a tablet version, and you you start mixing things to be more more. Um, you know that this will run first and then it will be overwritten when the, 
the width of the screen is bigger than a thousand pixels. And in the end, the default will be the responsive approach. So you will have a um, mobile first approach on the, 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 the theme that you are developing. But you start coding for the desktop version. So this way you, you don't need to, to, to oh, having the design for, for the desktop version is not an issue anymore to keep with the, with the mobile first approach. And it's pretty much like that. So you will benefit with this approach uh, of targeting the DOM objects and then style the different uh, screen sizes uh, for, for it. And you can edit, add new, new breakpoints uh, for your styling. In the end, you will, you will need to compile everything using these preprocessors pre and you have your style sheet clean and easy to, to improve on, on, on the future. Yeah, pretty much like that. Here we have uh, some samples, oh, some refers that I used to, to, to get here. Perhaps I will put them on the Meetup uh, website, a link for them. Pretty much this. Any questions regarding the presentation? Yep. So basically your approach is to uh, design for mobile first. But until you've gotten the model design, you create media queries for like the larger versions. You, you start working with what you have. So if you have the designs for the desktop version, and there are other techniques that you can use on the, um, using the preprocessors. You can set, for instance, variables, and instead of having here defined the thousand pixels, you can have a variable and call it for instance large and you only need to override that variable on the when where it's set and it will refresh every object on the DOM with that breakpoint. Uh, I mean did that answer your question? Yeah. Or seems like yeah with this approach, you, you, when you are styling on that, this point, you are starting by the, the, the mobile first, right? Yeah. So by default, perhaps I'm, I, I'm skipping one main step, that is the, the, the why you should uh, design first for the mobile. Well, from, from my perspective, looking at the code, it looks like you're doing mobile first, text line center, Yes. And then you're doing a media query for greater than 500 pixels. Yes. And then greater than 1,000 pixels. So that's just what it looks like. Yeah, it so is. So it looks like you're doing mobile first, but since you've only got the desktop version of the design, mm -hmm. you're creating media queries specifically for those. And then when you finally get the mobile version, then you're going to fill out the rest. Yeah. Pretty much like that. Does, does CSS support having media queries inside the, no. the, no? It's only if you use a pro preprocessor then it's going to, okay. I want to check that before <laughs> <laughs> uh, I came here. I thought it could be a, a good question, so yeah. okay. it, does, it doesn't allow it. What does not allow? I don't understand. Um, to use this, this approach within this, the CSS standards, so having set the um, object on and then the MIDI queries within that object. You can do that in uh, in the CSS. You need to like I showed you before. Yeah, I'm using just CSS for this stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> what he means is but that the media query has to be outside the CSS selector. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, like this. I understand it. So what happens is is that it, it's um, I guess it's harder if you need to restyle something mm -hmm. uh, if you have an approach like this because it's focused on the MIDI queries rather than in the objects. It's a lot of hustle. 
yeah. so much time. Yeah, yeah, and you don't, you are not always sure where to put everything. And with that, with this approach that I'm bringing, you have for that object, you have everything there. So it's easier to 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 keep it keep it updated, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I was I was thinking to go to learn less or so just because of that actually, <laughs> <laughs> but I was always too lazy. To. Okay. But I lose more and more time doing that actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every good, time right? I, I found a pro uh, project that I I will need to work on that is already someone have worked it before, using using the standards, it's um, difficult to to. to First, to, to get into the mind of the one, the person that worked before, and it will be always a um, bad thing to, to to keep it updated, I guess. So what we're seeing right now is just regular CSS, right? Yeah. I will bring perhaps. Because then it can show a difference from that and using less or assess. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you the website. Well, basically, this is for, for the SAS, but the, the, the DLS strategy is, is about the same. You have, um, I was using probably nesting is the best. Into this project. 